Shmaya, we here again in Mayim Chaim, Tuesday night Chabura, and Biyam Dakecha, on Shabbat Kodesh, we are going to be learning on page Pei Hei. Pei. Oh, what timing, Baruch Hashem. And we are learning about Bezat Hashem, often Avodah Lemaaseh, the actual practical way to apply the Avodah that we need to do during these six days of the week in order to bring the Shabbat into our weekdays. Up until now, we explained that the main preparation for Shabbat is to be busy with Shabbat and its amazing, wonderful light internally during the whole entire week. Right? During your week when you are engaged in the light of Shabbat and you're preparing towards Shabbat, that is exactly the, the ultimate way to prepare. To be busy with Shabbat the whole entire week. And we explained that on Sundays, on the first day of the week, we have to have the intention to leave inside of us and to acquire the additional level of neshama, which is the ability to recognize Hashem's unity and His oneness in the world. And this recognition brings a person to ishtokikut, to a yearning, to a longing, to hard work with passion from a place of bitul ayesh, from a place of nullification of self. On the second day of the week, we have to have intention to leave inside of us the additional level of ruach, that we received, which is the ability to feel the reality of Hashem with an emotional feeling inside the heart, with love, awe, and dvekut, nitzachon, odavi, yashrut, perseverance, submissiveness, and gratitude, and also a connection to Hashem. And on Tuesdays, we have intention to leave inside of us and to acquire the aspect of the nefesh, which is the ability to believe with a full heart, a true heart, and to receive upon ourselves the yoke of the kingship of Hashem, to do what we need to do, to follow the Torah as it's written. And uh, that's how we download these lights, right, after the Shabbat. And then we have the part where we have to have the intention and the shir shel yom. We mentioned that in the shir shel yom, when we say ayom yom sheni be Shabbat kodesh, right? Today is the second day to Shabbat. The song that the Leviim would sing in the temple, right? When we get to that part, that is the time every single day to be dealing with with the energy of that day and whatever aspect that you can. Specifically, when a person mentions the day. Hayom Yom Sheni, right? You have, every day you have that sentence. Hayom Yom. Today is such and such day to Shabbat. The song mm. that the, Le- the Levites would sing in the temple, right? When you say today is one day today to Shabbat. Today is two days to Shabbat. Today is three days to Shabbat. That specific part of saying the day, that is where you're meant to have the most intention. Not only by way of that are you doing a mitzvah of Zechot the Shabbat, it Yom Shabbat. Remember the day of Shabbat in order to sanctify it. That is a mitzvah, a positive mitzvah from the Torah to remember every single day Shabbat. It's one of the ten memorances for mm. Sephardim, six memorances for Ashkenazim, right? Every single day. This also helps with the idea of the sanctity of receiving the sanctity of Shabbat. And therefore, the Arizal says, Arizal says it's a mitzvah to, to count these days. And not only that, it's also beneficial to preparation towards Shabbat. Even though this has to do with every day though, right? specifically, there is a specific time. As every day we have this avoda, right? the whole entire day, but there's a specific time, and that is during Shachrit, when you say Shir Shil Yom, when you say the song of the day, today is such and such days to the day of Shabbat, right? Today is one day to Shabbat, today is two days to Shabbat, that's the specific time. There, the Rashash, of Shalom Sharabi, he instituted there that we should have this intention, this kavana, and to think about it. And he says like this, this is his words, Da ki yesh the song that the Levim would sing is the secret of Atzilut that is bringing down light and influence of, of, this, of this additional Neshama upon us 
הנלוויים הם המעוררים על ידי השיר את בחינת הנשמה המאירה בנו. The Leviim, by way of their songs, they arouse inside of us this aspect of the neshama that is illuminating through us. Think about it, just for a second, what the Levi's job was in the temple. You would walk to the temple to do tshuva, to connect to Hashem, to bring a korban, to bring a sacrifice, and you had people there, a whole entire tribe nearly, right, that were singing songs in order to enhance your tshuva process. They were bringing down immense lights by way of their instruments and their singing, mm -hmm. and that helped you to do tshuva. This is how you do the kavana, okay? The kavana ashir on 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 uh, on sorry on uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, you have the intention to acquire the lights of the of the previous Shabbat that just passed, mm -hmm. right? And on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you have the intention to receive the lights of the Shabbat that is coming up, right? This true light of Shabbat, Shabbat Kodesh, and the additional neshama or the ruach or the nefesh that we're getting, like we learned last week, right? Sundays and Fridays are neshama, Mondays and Thursdays are ruach, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are nefesh. Try to go deep in your thoughts when you're singing the song of the day, to really, really, really feel this aspect of an additional neshama, additional ruach, additional uh, nefesh, to go as deep as possible as you can, whatever level you're at. And by way of doing this, every single day you're connecting to the light of Shabbat. Shalom Aleichem. Ve'ashemot ha'kadoshim ha'shichayim b'ze hem. Okay, I'm not going to get into this right now. There's shemot here, there's names. We can get back to it when we're, once we're off camera, but for now, we're not going to go there. <coughs> That's one thing. So the first avoda that we have in order to connect your Shabbat is that you, and when you get to the song of the day, you have the intention of either acquiring or preparing to acquire the light of the neshama, the light of the ruach, the light of the nefesh, which again is thoughts and, and passion and yearning, our love, awe and, and dvekut, and your emunah, and receiving upon yourself for the Torah. Then we get to the Birkat Amazon. Then we get to Birkat Amazon. Another place that we have intentional according to the Kavanot of the Arizal is when it comes to Birkat Amazon, the blessing after eating a meal, specifically with bread. When we say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Bonei Yerushalayim. Okay, specific blessing, the blessing of Jerusalem, bless your God, Builder of Jerusalem, right? Then, in the name Yudke Bavke, Abaya, the name of Hashem there, you can have intention, there you have intention either to acquire, from the, th right? the first three days of the week is to acquire what was, the next three days of the week are to prepare for what's coming up. You're either downloading or preparing, and you're either integrating or, or preparing to download, right? So one of the two. So when you get to the blessing of Jerusalem, again, the Chachamim, and the way it's established is that a Jew should be making a meal on bread every single day, right? It's not a mandatory to do it, but it saves him a lot of diseases, it's a good thing, you get a Birkat Amazon, in that Birkat Amazon, and this was the way of the, back in the day, everybody ate bread every single day, right? So every day when they would come eat a meal, usually it was uh, the bread of the morning, right? So you get to Birkat Amazon, you get to this blessing of Bless you, Hashem, builder of Jerusalem. When you say Hashem, there's different names there that you can intend in order to receive on the aspect of the meals. Because remember, we said there's downloading of Shabbat, the light of Shabbat, on the prayers, the spiritual side, and then there's downloading of the spiritual side of the physical side, which is the eating. Right? We have we have meals on Shabbat and we have prayers on Shabbat. When we when we when we come to pray. We download that light by our prayers in Shacharit, saying today is such and such day to Shabbat, yeah. and doing Avdala. But what about the eating? What about the meals? And bringing the meals, the, the, the sanctity of Shabbat, into our weekday meals. So here, this is that part. And everything is according to the same thing that we mentioned already, right? that on days Sunday and Friday, your intention is the yearning and the passion of the Neshama towards Hashem. On the days Mondays and Thursdays, your intention is the emotions of the heart, which is the idea of Ruach towards Hashem. And on the days of Tuesday and Wednesday, it is the ability to feel 
emunah and to take upon yourself the Torah and the mitzvot. And there's also shemot for this. There's also names for this. Again, usually we don't go into names when we're on camera. Unless we can do it afterwards. Zat Hashem. That's the second of that you have, right? So we have the song of the day. We have Birkat Amazon and the blessing Bonei Yerushalayim. And now we have Chok Yisrael. There's another idea that the Arizal writes in Shara Mitzvot. Lachin al yedo et kabalat kedushat Shabbat to pre prepare for the sanctity of Shabbat, and that is learning according to a specific order that the Arizal established, which is called Chok Yisrael. Okay, just background of what, what would what would happen. The Arizal would walk home every day in Sfat when he lived here in Sfat. He would walk home with his tefillin and his talit still on after Shacharit, and while he was walking home, he would learn five different parts of Torah. Tanakh, Mishnah Gemara, Torah Nevi'im Ktuvim, Mishnah Gemara. This was the minag of the Ariza for the 20 plus months that he was here in Sfat. He would cut, he would pray Shacharit, walk home with his tefillin and his talit still on, learning on these five different parts of the Torah. Okay? Came the generation of the Chida, of Chaim Yosef David Azulai, and he added to it what's called Yosef Chok, Yosef the Chok, right? which is he added Alacha, uh, Musar, and Zohar. He added also. Now, in the Chida's lifetime already, they started to print it according to his setup. <clears throat> and now that's how Chok Lisa is printed throughout the whole entire world. It's a very, very lofty thing. You touch eight different parts of Torah, right? And you prepare it for the parasha of the week. That's the Torah that you learn. Very deep thing, but let's see what he says here. The, the encompassing idea here is that every single day you, see a, you say a few psukim from the parasha of the next upcoming Shabbat. You say them, right? Two verses in, in Hebrew, one in Aramaic. And the amount of psukim that you say is 26. On Thursday night, which is called in Hebrew, Lil Shishi, sixth night, the sixth night, right? Because you're going to the sixth day, it's the night of the sixth day, right? There you learn another 26, which brings us to 52, which is Gematria Ben, which is Gematria Eliyahu. Shahu Hashem Shal Shkina Gdusha, which is the name of the Shkina, right? 52, which is Yod, Yud, right? Yud, the letter Yud spelled, spelled out, Yod, Hey, Hey, and then the letters Vav, Vav, and then the letters Hey, Hey, right? And you have intention when you come to do your learning of Chok Lisel every single day that you are yearning and waiting and desiring the light of the Holy Shkina, and therefore, in this learning, I am preparing. For her, a place to reveal herself during Shabbat. I am right now, right now, making myself a chariot, a vehicle for the Shechina to dwell and to reveal itself on me by way of preparing so much Torah towards the Shabbat. And this is the order: on the first day, you learn the first six verses of the parasha, and you have intention there that you are establishing and drilling inside of you the additional level of neshama. On the second day, meaning on Monday. You learn four psukim, and you have intention to bring down the ruach. On the third day, meaning Tuesday, you have five psukim from the parasha, the next five psukim, right? And you have intention there for the nefesh, the additional nefesh that you, again, this is download time, right? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you're downloading, you're integrating, sorry. And then on Wednesday, you learn six psukim, and you have intention to prepare for the nefesh of Shabbat that's coming up. On Thursday, you learn five psukim, and you have intention on the Ruach. And on Thursday night, you have intention to learn 26 psukim, and the intention is to prepare the Neshama Yetera, the additional Neshama that you're going to read, read, receive. But on Lel Shishi, on Thursday night, you don't learn two and one, two Hebrew, one Aramaic, just one alone, meaning you just learn the Torah one time, you just say the verse in Hebrew once even though according to Kabbalah you're not meant to learn Mikra, you're not meant to learn Tanakh at night time, even though that's the case on the night of Thursday night the Arizal, he already said that you can learn these Psukim because there's already illumination of Shabbat, there's already, Shabbat is already starting, Shabbat is not like the rest of the week where you can't learn things at night 
right? Turning things at night. So since it's already, you have less than 24 hours until Shabbat starts, the gates are open, learn these 26 verses at night. So that's Chok Lisa, okay? And then we have a specific type of work that we have for every single day. Another thing that we have, the Rizal adds, is that on Sunday and on Friday, we have to deal with the work of machshava, of thoughts, right? Neshama is connected to the brain, the neshama dwells inside the brain, that's its dwelling location, and the brain obviously deals with mainly with thoughts. So on Mondays, I'm uh, sorry, Sundays and Fridays, we're dealing with neshama, which is the thoughts. And the, thing, the idea that you're meant to do is have holy thoughts. You're meant to work on your thoughts. To have holy thoughts of contemplation on Hashem, of yearning towards Hashem, of nullifying my ego, dealing with, with thoughts and with shemot. Also with the holy names of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Right? For example, on Sunday, your, your whole entire dealing is that your thoughts should be clean. You should, be, uh, you should have a vacant mind space to be able to clean your head from all of the filth and all of the dirt, so that by way of that, you'll be able to exist on that same day and bring into your, in, in, inside of you the additional neshama from Shabbat, right? And you'll be able to really download it. And there's different names that we can get into again off camera for that. Bizat Hashem, no, it's not the time for that. And then, so that's, that's uh, Sundays and Fridays. Mondays and Thursdays, Shani v'Chamishi. What what are they? What's Mondays and Thursdays? Ruach. Ruach, right? There we're dealing with Ruach, and then on those days you should increase your Torah learning. And when you deal with Torah learning, you have intention. Not only am I doing the mitzvah of Talmud Torah, of learning Torah, which is in correspondence to all of the mitzvot. There's also a unique. Uh, uh, added benefit to this learning that I'm able to acquire the idea of Ruach to acquire this this additional spirit that I had and by, by way of the Holy Torah and then I will have an additional power in my Neshama to cling to Hashem right Ruach again is the emotions and they are mainly love awe meaning respect and Dvekut an attachment to Hashem Torah is Dvekut so when I learn Torah with the intention of not only downloading the Ruach that I received on Shabbat, but in order to learn Torah Lishma, which is to connect to Hashem. So now I'm improving the, the higher level of Ruach, which includes inside of that Dvekut that I got on Shabbat, and I'm using that additional level that I want to acquire and keep inside of me. I'm doing that and making that acquisition by way of learning Torah with the intention to cling to Hashem. Right? Yeah. And this is all, all comes together. And those are Torah days. Those are the Torah days, exactly. Monday and Thursday, exactly. There you go. It all adds up. Hashem, you just have to learn it. You see, it. the whole system is perfect. It's just we don't know all of these things. And then we have Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Which, which, what is the idea? Uh, nefesh. Nefesh. What's the idea of nefesh? Let's push further. Let's see, uh, let's see if we can do a review on the go. What's the idea of nefesh? Nefesh is like the root of body. Uh, uh, no, here, what we learned. Amuna. No, what we learned here. Not just what nefesh is. Right, nefesh right. according to Avoda. Amuna. Huh? Amuna, Amuna and? It's a power that can be used for divine service. Divine service, exactly. Right? Amuna and? Kabbalat ol malchut shamayim. Receiving upon yourself the yoke of the kingship of Hashem. Meaning keeping Allah. Keeping shukhan ruh. Keeping the mitzvot that are given out in the Torah. Right? On those days. With pleasure. With pleasure. There you go. Try to do action-oriented mitzvot. Try to do actual mitzvot in the world that involve an action. That they have to do with the nefesh. Again, the nefesh is the body, is the liver, is the kabed. It's, uh, it's the most physical aspect of your soul. And you have intention to receive, by way of that, the additional level of nefesh that you received, that you had on Shabbat. Now, Rizal says... Darizo says, on Tuesday you should have, you should do, uh, <laughs> you should do uh, action-oriented mitzvot, specifically those that are done with the legs, like escorting the dead in burial, or going to do bikur cholim, right? To go visit the sick, 
or to work on your body, to keep a holy body, that if you mountain bike and your intention is to be holy and to connect to Hashem, then that's for sure a mitzvah, right? And that is the, that is the idea on those days. <coughs> What happens if you don't have, you don't have the opportunity to do any action-oriented mitzvah? You can always work or you're patu, meaning, that, God forbid, a person's sick, he's in bed, he can't get up and do, there's a funeral in the city, but he can't do it. He's not able to do it, he's patu. Or he's learning Torah, and I can't go do a, I'm not going to go to a funeral right now, because I'm learning Torah, I'm not going to stop my Torah learning to go to a funeral, and they already have a minion. And the way that, the, that your Torah comes before these mitzvot. Meaning, if there's no one to go do a burial, if there's no one to go do Bikur Cholim, then you stop learning Torah and you go do it. Right? The, the granny has no one to walk her across the street, you stop your learning and you walk her across the street. Right? But if you're learning Torah and you see someone else coming to help her across the street, or she doesn't really need help, then you don't stop your Torah learning. So what do you do then? The like Rizal says you have to do an action-oriented mitzvah to download the light. Then you have to try to think and to feel that you are taking upon yourself the yoke of the kingship of heaven with emunah. Right? To contemplate that I am receiving upon myself the Torah and to feel that I am obligated to keep the commandments of Hashem. That if there was an opportunity for me right now to do a mitzvah and I could go do it, I would do it. Right? To think it and to feel it. So too, you should increase your prayer on these days and your conversations with your master, with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. This is also an idea that has to do with nefesh and you have intention to receive by way of this the additional neshama, sorry, the additional nefesh from Shabbat that was and Shabbat that's coming up. So on all of these days, you have the intention to be dealing with the idea that belongs to that day. The Kabel al Kedushat Shabbat, which is Mainly, right, the general idea is to receive upon yourself the sanctity of Shabbat. There's different ways of downloading that light, according to the different aspects, right? You have contemplation, you have meditation, you have Torah learning, you have uh, action-oriented mitzvahs, you have Eid Bodidu, to talk to the Shabbat, Tefillah. Like the words of the Arizal says, V'chol kavanotecha, the Rizal says, in all of your intentions, in all of your motives, they should be towards this one supernal motive to receive the sanctity, the additional sanctity of Shabbat. And this thing is a huge benefit for a person to receive upon themselves the sanctity of Shabbat. Those are the words of the Rizal. This is exactly what the, the Kaddish Baruch whose intention was when he commanded us. Remember the day of Shabbat in order to sanctify it. Why do you have to remember Shabbat? Meaning, on Shabbat, okay, of, of course, it's Shabbat, I don't need to remember so much. But my, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you might have forgotten. Remember it, and we do that specifically in halacha, by way of saying today is such and such day to Shabbat, right? In order to sanctify it, what's the goal? To sanctify your Shabbat, so that your Shabbat should be that much more sweet, that much better. And then, Zat Hashem, you're going to have a higher, higher level of light on, on Shabbat Kodesh. Now we have Vav, Achana, the preparation. Not only the idea of dealing with the light of Shabbat the whole entire week, like we've explained in the past uh, week, two weeks, not only that, there's a very precious work that on every single day to do something in order to prepare towards Shabbat. Uh, physical action towards preparation towards Shabbat. Whether you're, sorry, no, it doesn't have to only be physical, but whether it's learning Torah, praying, requesting from Hashem that you should merit it in, for you to, to really get a connection to the light of Shabbat, or whether we're talking about actual physical preparations. And a very good piece of advice there is here, in order to, to get yourself some established uh, permanence in this, to prepare physically with an action every single day, something small in order for the honor of Shabbat. Not only the, the big preparation that we have to do for, from Thursday night to, to the, entrance, the, entrance, the, 
beginning of Shabbat, right? Friday work of actual preparations of cleaning the house and cooking and all these different things. Not only that, we have to also do it throughout the week. Like Shammai, a zaken, right? That Shammai, a zaken, he would go, he would go to the shuk, he would see a nice piece of uh, fish, this is for Shabbat. Next day he would go to the shuk, he would see a nice piece of fish, this is better, this one's for Shabbat. Every single day he was preparing towards Shabbat, and then he would eat whatever got, you know, lowered down. And uh, it was, this was the best that I found all week. But tomorrow I'm going to find something better. As soon as I get that something better, I go back and I eat the previous fish that I got, right? And, but every single day he was doing an actual preparation towards the Shabbat HaKadosh. Shabbat HaKadosh. And we've already explained that the proper preparation, sorry, that proper preparation is the most important tool that you have in order to merit by way of that to get the proper light of Shabbat. If you really want to experience Shabbat, you have to prepare towards it. And in general, this is a huge thing in Hasidut, preparation. And any type of preparation that a Jew does, he should have intention and to think in the time that he's doing that preparation that you want and you're expecting and anticipating the light of Shabbat and that it should illuminate all of the Holy Shabbat and that you're yearning and longing and missing this wonderful light of Shabbat and by way of this you're preparing a vessel to receive that light and whoever whoever can increase and go deeper in their preparation it's a praiseworthy thing and then you have to work according to the middle of that day there's a, another way of an internal preparation that we can do all six days of the week and that is by way of the Magid of Mezrich Magid of Mezrich was the number one student of the Baal Shem Tov, right? and the Rebbe of tons of Tzadikim but specifically the Balatanya and he would do according to the Sfirot, every day according to the Sfirot. Every single day of the week, there's a different illumination, a different light that's coming down according to one of the Sfirot. And it goes like this. Shabiyom Rishon, on the first day, meaning on Sunday, there is the light of Chesed. Therefore, you should be trying to do a Voda, meaning work on the side of Chesed, on your Midah of Chesed, of loving kindness. The idea mainly is the love of Hashem, right? When you love another Jew, it's because you love Hashem. You love the Hashem that's inside of you, right? And so on and so forth, right? But mainly, Chesed, the main, the highest level of Chesed is Avat Hashem, right? So on Sundays, you should be working more on your Avat Hashem. On Mondays, Yom Sheni, there is the illumination of the light of Gvura, of might, constriction. The idea there is Irat Shamaim, awe and respect of Hashem honoring Hashem, and you should be working hard to strengthen yourself on that day, more and more and more and more, Yigat Shammai, more on recognition and, and respect of Hashem. On Tuesdays, Yom Shlishi, there is the illumination of Tiferet, which the idea of Tiferet is Dveikut, attachment to Hashem. Therefore, you should increase your Dveikut on this day and be dealing with it throughout the whole entire day according to the power that you have. On Wednesdays, there is the illumination of Netzach, which the idea is to be loyal to Hashem and to stand persevering, perseverant and determined to get through all of the obstacles that you have in life for the sake of Hashem and strengthen yourself very, very much on this idea, which right now obviously is Wednesday. So just a hint, hint, whenever you feel like you don't want to come to the Chabur on Tuesday night, which is really Wednesday, the Avodah is Netzach to get over those preventions and to show up, Mizat Hashem. And then we have Thursday on Yom Hamishi, which is their Hod, the idea of Hod, which is to recognize and to be grateful that everything is from Hashem and Hashem does everything and strengthen yourself to contemplate this, that everything is in the hand of Hashem and get used to saying thank you Hashem on everything that happens to you. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Everything that you go through, thank you, Hashem. I know it's you. Everything is good. Everything's for the good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On Friday, Yom Shishi, there is illumination of the night of uh, of the light of Yesod. Tiferet was Dveikut, which is attachment to Hashem. On Friday, it's Yesod, which the idea is connection and connecting everything to Hashem. To take the whole entire creation that I'm experiencing, my eating, my sleeping, my learning, my prayers, my physicality, my spirituality, everything in life, and to bring it back to Hashem, 
and you have to strengthen yourself this in this aspect with a lot, a lot, a lot of, a lot of push. This is a lot of effort to connect everything back to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. So and it, what? What's the difference between Tiferet and Yisod? Tiferet is Dvekut, yeah. is a feeling like I personally am one with Hashem. I'm connected to Hashem. I'm, I'm rooted in Hashem, and I want to feel that reality. When it comes to Yisod, it's when I'm eating this food, I'm eating it for Hashem. Uh, when I'm learning this Torah, I'm learning it for Hashem. <clears throat> when everything that's happening, the guy that pisses me off, that was Hashem. Everything is Hashem, everything is Hashem. Yisod is always about connecting everything back to Hashem. By the way, whoever wants to go deeper in all these spirit on my YouTube channel, you have there, when we did the Sfirat Omer, every single week we went deep, deep, deep. What is every single Midah? What is the, what is the Avodah? What is the things, the good things there? What are the bad things to look out for? Everything was explained there. It's in the Sfirat Omer section in the playlist. So on every single day, you work according to the emotion of that day, that is by way of that, that Sfirat, right? That specific Midah that we're dealing with. Like on the first day, you intensify in your heart the feelings of love towards Hashem. And you start to do actions that express love to Hashem. Right? And included in this, you have to increase inside of you Avat Yisrael, to love the Jews. To love every single Jew and to try to help the Jews. To help your friends. And again, Avat Yisrael, like the Shiran Avat Yisrael that we learned, it's not, one, it's not uh, something special to love a Jew on the other side of the world that you don't know. The real work is to love those people that you that you see every day, that you go to Minyan with, that are in your yeshiva, that are in your city, that are in your neighborhood. To love the people in your supermarket that's close to you. To the people that are, you're closest to, right? Because if you... Avat Yisrael, loving every Jew, is an outcome of having a loving relationship with Hashem. Whoever loves the father, for sure loves his children. Right? Because why? The children are a piece of the father. If you really love the father, you have to love the offspring. Right? Be'ezat Hashem, when a person is dealing with every single day according to the midah and the sphere that it's rooted in, then in Shabbat, all of the midot are going to be illuminated together. Shabbat is malchut, right? Shabbat is malchut. It's the expression of everything comes together in the most internal aspect of everything, which is a recognition and a comprehension that at the core, everything is just the reality of Hashem. Because according to the avoda of the midot, according to how you work on your midot, so it too will be the revelation of the mochin and the illumination of Shabbat that comes. And this has a clear uh, source according to the Rashash. Because the Rashash says on the first day, on the Hayom Yom, that today is one day to Shabbat, right? That goes according to Havaya, Segol, right? Kitsu, he also there on the song of the day, he had sorted out that every, every intention of the seven days of the week, six, seven days of the week, goes according to the same knowledge of Chesed Gvor, Tiferet Nitzach of Yisrael. Same one. Yeah. And this song of the day, every day, those are the intentions. Same Ayon. one is the Magidim Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. Tov. Now we have just, uh, three more pages and we're done. This is the summary of everything that we've said so far. Next we're week, starting. next week we're going to... What? We're done starting. We're done starting, exactly. That was the intro. Now we're going... Yeah. <laughs> next week already we're going to be dealing with Erev Shabbat. Erev Shabbat is going to be a few weeks. Uh, maybe two, three, two weeks or so, three weeks. And then we're in Shabbat, right? But for now, up until now, we've only been learning about the six days of the week. We started with Avdala. Right? We've explained what is the work of Sunday, Friday, Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Right? And here is the wrap-up of everything we've discussed so far until now. And next week already we're going to start Erev Shabbat, meaning Thursday night, into going into Shabbat. Tov. The Avoda of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. We have two different types of Avoda. In the beginning of the week, right, we have Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. The work there is to be successful in downloading and integrating the light that we received into the lowest places of our being. Meaning, a person needs to strengthen himself to continue to be strong with the light of Shabbat that you received on Shabbat and to live it out even in the times that there's a concealment. Saturday night, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Right? You're getting to, you left the Shabbat, you're getting back into the world, you have to bring that light, that lofty light of Shabbat, 
all the way into back into the office, back into work, back into everything that's in the mundane. And from with this great illumination of Shabbat Kodesh, which taught us that what is what is Shabbat coming to teach us? What is the three letter phrase, three word phrase of this whole entire Chabura? There you go, there you go. Enod Milvado. That is the message of Biyam Dakecha. That is the message of this Chabura, and that is the message of Shabbat. Enod Milvado. There is nothing besides the Kadosh Baruch Hu, and everything is nullified in front of Hashem. All we have in our life is our connection and our relationship with Hashem. And you bring this feeling into your weekdays, that even there you should live out this godly truth. From within this, you start to arouse yourself, that, they show that these lights of your nefesh and neshama and the ruach should continue to illuminate inside of you. Again, the neshama is the power of contemplation and yearning and passion. The Ruach is Ahava, Iran, Vekut, love, awe, and an attachment. And the Nefesh is Emuna and Kabbalat Ol, right? The belief in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, loyalty to Hashem, and taking upon yourself the Torahs, the Torah's commandments. And even if you didn't manage to reach the same level that you were at on Shabbat, even though that's the case, the more successful you are in holding on to that light of Shabbat, the light of clarity of Enod Min Vado, the clarity inside, internally, of what Shabbat really means, throughout the weekdays, that is what you've acquired, right? As much as you manage to integrate the light, that is how much you've downloaded. You receive the full blast on Shabbat. How much you stay in that consciousness on Monday, and Tuesday, and Wednesday shows how much you really downloaded from the Shabbat. What stayed inside of you and what continued on. This work is applicable to every single day. Specifically, when we come to say Shir Shalyom, the song of the day, and when we say Bekat Amazon, and we say Bonei Yerachamav Yushayim, the builder of Jerusalem, right? Then we have the second part, which is the Avodah of Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Revi'i, Hamishi, and Shishi. <clears throat> From Wednesday until Shabbat, there's a new type, type of work, which is the preparation and the anticipation for the light of Shabbat that is going to be revealed on the next Shabbat. When you can, go into thinking about this more and go into, and go into thinking about it. Specifically when you say the song of the day and when you say Uvnei Yerushalayim, right? Uvnei Yerushalayim, the blessing of Jerusalem, same thing. And you feel inside of you the anticipation for the great light of Shabbat it's good to express this yearning and this longing with an action and to say with your mouth to Hashem, Abba, my father, my father in heaven, Hashem, when am I already going to merit to an internal level, a deeper internal level? Please, my father, merit me to ascend more on the ladder of comprehension. To recognize you, to get to know you, to come closer to you, to cling to you more and more and more and more. This is what we have to say to Akadosh Baruch Hu. We have a long footnote here. This is a big principle. Anytime we come to do a preparation, the idea of preparation in general is yearning and desire. Right? If you want something, you prepare towards it. You want to get married, so how do you prepare? You start to look into different things. You start to learn about dating. You start to do classes on dating. You, you have to go, you have to date. Right? You, you don't just get married. You don't just stand under the chuppah. Dating is part of preparation of date, of marrying. Right? It's all, it's, the preparation, it shows that you yearn towards the thing, and I want this thing. I want it, therefore I'm trying to do something to get it. It's not enough to just sit and to, oh, I want the light. I would love to get this light. You can, and it's beneficial for you to try to feel it already. Meaning, for example, a person, he's waiting for the light of love. You can sit and think, when am I going to merit to love Hashem? 
before Lavav, you could also go and sit and contemplate on the feeling of actually feeling love. Part of anticipation is that you already go into experiencing that thing that you're anticipating towards. I can already taste it, I can already smell it, I can already, right? This is not a contradiction to the yearning and the expectation, the anticipation. If you already taste Shabbat before Shabbat has started, when Shabbat starts, you're going to feel it much, much, much stronger. It's not enough just to, oh, I want, please Hashem, give me Shabbat. Please Hashem, let me, I can't wait for Shabbat. It's not enough. To go in with a brand new fire, practically, in all of the emotions that are involved in feeling Shabbat. Even though you really can't acquire them, you can't really download them. You can still go into feeling Shabbat, feeling anything in life that you're prepared for, by way of preparation, by way of teaching it, by way, by way of learning about it, by way of feeling it, by way of contemplating on it. It's a parable for a person who is expecting something big in life. Like a chatan waiting for his wedding day. The way of the world is sometimes he sits, he thinks, what's my wedding going to be like? Who's going to come? Who am I going to get the brachas to? What am I going to wear? Where am I going to do it? All these things, you go into this imagining what it's going to be like to be in your chuppah. You start to feel a little bit of the wedding already in your heart. This is the idea of going into something actually by way of preparing towards it. You're already actually there because you're preparing for it in a way of feeling it, not just, oh, please, Hashem, help me get married. No, no, no. Do you, do you think about it? Do you contemplate it? Do you see yourself doing it? There's, a, there's a, a teacher in America named Gedalia Fenster. It's amazing. Helps a lot of people to do Shabbat and come back to Hashem. Huh? He sent me to Uman. He sent me to Uman. Last time I saw him was in Uman. <laughs> that he says, I heard him in a class say once, face to face, I got to sit in the class, and he said, his advice to women that want to get married is to subscribe to three wedding journals. To get a, a magazine subscription to a wedding journal. Why? They're going to start to see canopies, they're going to start to see wedding dresses, they're going to start to see halls, they're going to start to see invitations. They start to uh, surround themselves with the idea of getting married. It attracts the agenda energy and it helps you to even get closer to it. Not the Shem. Whoever understands should understand. <laughs> Specifically on Wednesdays, like right now. The, the yearning that you have is to merit to a higher level of receiving upon yourself the yoke of Hashem. And to think and to feel and to pray to feel. To pray to feel Hashem with complete clarity. You have to think, feel, and pray to feel Hashem with complete clarity or more clarity. And by way of this, to strengthen your emuna, to receive upon yourself all malchuto, the yoke of his kingship, beyeter pshitut v'tmimut, with more simplicity, with more innocence, with more just to do it. Hashem said to do this, it's a lacha, I'm going to do it. Don't think about, I feel like doing it or I don't feel like doing it, I'm going to push it off, maybe I'll do it later. No, now's the time to do it, I'm going to do it. I don't care how I feel. I don't feel like doing it, but Hashem said to do it, simply, I'm just going to do it. Right? Then we have Thursday. On Thursday, Yom Hamishi, you're yearning and to prepare yourself to the light and the, the light of the Ruach, or Midot Kedushot, which is all of your Midot, Chesed, and Tzal Yesod, and to arouse inside your heart to feel love, awe, and Dveikut on a higher level and a more, inter in a, a more um, internal level that comes from a recognition, a much loftier recognition, on the true reality of Hashem, and you anticipate this great light with a huge arousal inside your heart, with this way of preparation, right? Like the love you feel of Hashem in Shacharit and Shabbat, or in the meals, and the singing on Friday night, you can download that same light on Tuesday, on Thursday, 
right? Wednesday. Whatever it is, <laughs> you can go there by way of preparing, which is, again, feeling that thing before it already came. And then we have Fridays, and there you want to strengthen yourselves in contemplations and holy thoughts of yearning towards Hashem Himself from a place of bitul ayesh, I'm nullifying myself. I don't want it for me. I want to be connected to you because that's where I'm meant to be connected. That's where I'm meant. That's where I'm rooted. That is the true reality. And deal with learning books that arouse this fiery passion of of yearning and longing to desire to live out the, the will of Hashem, to live out this reality of connection to Hashem. So too, strengthen yourself in contemplating holy names, Shemot HaKadoshim, the holy names that we have to contemplate. Let's see what we have here. Arizal says on Thursday night, you should have an intention to, to, to feel the, uh, the great ascension that will be on Kabbalat Shabbat. On Kabbalat Shabbat, all of the worlds elevate. We're going to learn about it soon, next week. Right? All of the worlds ele elevate into a Shabbat mode. On Thursday night already, you have to start to feel that ascension. All of the worlds are sent to Atzilut. A person on Shabbat, he elevates to live in a higher level of Shabbat. A higher level of complete godly comprehension. Thursday night when you say Kirat Shema Lamita, Shema before going to sleep, Shema of the bedtime, right? There you have an intention to feel how tomorrow night, in 24 hours from now, all of the world and me, we're all going to send to Atzilut and we're going to have complete God clarity. When do you do that? Thursday night already. <clears throat> so to Erev Shabbat, the Friday Mincha, before Shabbat starts, so to there we have the similar idea. Last page and we're done. The relationship between Shabbat and the weekdays. There's three ways of how to look of the relationship between Shabbat and the weekdays. Right? Again, we have two sets of weekdays. We have Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And we have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then we have Shabbat. One way of looking at it is, Shabbat is the first day of the six days of the week that come after it. Shabbat is the number one day, and then there's six days that follow it. Why? Because Shabbat, Kodesh, Midbarchim Kol Sheshet Yamei The six days of the week of action are blessed by way of Shabbat. Meaning, first the Shabbat, and then there's blessing that goes into six days of the week. Like the Zohar Kadosh explained, the Zohar explains two weeks ago in the parashah, parashat B'Shalach, the whole shefa, the whole entire shefa, the abundance, the spiritual lights, and the physical benefits that come down in a weekday come from the blessings of the Shabbat that preceded it. The second way that you can look at the relationship between Shabbat and the weekday is that Shabbat is the end all be all, the purpose of the six days of the week that came before it. And they are all preparation towards Shabbat. And therefore, it's called the seventh day. Right? The third way you can look at it is Shabbat Amalka, Shabbat the Queen. She, the Queen, is surrounded by the weekdays on all of her sides. From the right and from the left. Lefana, in front of her, meaning to the right of her. Yeshet Yamei Ravii Chamishi Veshishi. You have... Uh, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And after her, to the left of her, you have the days of Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Like the Arizal established in his songs for the meals of Shabbat. Yamina, Usmola, right? Right and left. Ubenayu, Kala. And in the middle, the Kala, the queen, the, the bride. And according to what we've explained in all three of these things, all of them are true together. Right? These three ways of looking at how Shabbat relates to the weekdays, they're all together. They're all true. What is the way that we actually do the avodah, that we actually do the work? That in the first three days, we are working in order to guard and to, and to establish the light of Shabbat that has passed. On the next three days, we are <coughs> now working towards receiving the light of the next Shabbat that's coming up. By way of this, we see that all of Shabbat is surrounded on right and left. Before and afterwards, before we're preparing, 
afterwards we're downloading, we're guarding, right? But these first three days of work, that we're working hard to guard the light of the Shabbat that just passed, that itself is a preparation for the next Shabbat. Because by way of me being able to really go into a deeper sense of avoda, to really download the last Shabbat, then it must be that I can already say, that all the, if I really, if I'm working to download the last Shabbat that was, that itself is a preparation for the next Shabbat. Because if I have more of a nefesh inside of me, more of a ruach inside of me, more of a neshama inside of me, my next Shabbat is going to be that much higher. So by me guarding and acquiring the lights that I downloaded last Shabbat, that is me preparing for the next Shabbat. Mm -hmm. And then even more so, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, which is all focused on the next Shabbat, is obviously that as well. Right? So B'zat Hashem, this is the Indian, this is the idea of the six days of the week, and how they're all connected to Shabbat. Next week, we're going to touch on Friday, the specific work of Friday. There's mikveh, there's tasting the food before Shabbat, there's shnaimika achatagum, there's the different preparations on Friday, right? There is cutting your nails, there is taking a shower, there is sleeping before Shabbat starts. Mayam. Mikveh. We have the mikveh. And then you have, uh, we're, going to get, we're going to touch on the clothing of Shabbat. We're going to touch on the candles of Shabbat. It's going to be a class that's very important for the ladies and also for us men to give over to the ladies and also for men that are single that have to light candles by ourselves to, to learn what we're actually doing. Right? And then we're going to have also the tests and the, the secret of happiness that we have on, on Shabbat, the hardships of, of Arab Shabbat, but also the happiness that could be there. And then we're going to have Mincha of Shabbat. There's a lot, there's a lot to do here, Baruch Hashem. And what else do we have? Hashem, we have a whole entire. Then we go into Kabbalat Shabbat. We have a lot until we get to actual Shabbat. We, we got some weeks. Baruch Hashem, Isiyat Dishmaya. That was it. Baruch Adonai Leolam. Amen. Ve Amen. Yes, sir. Mr. Yes. I wanted to address that part about meeting your.